Hello, hello, <laughs> YouTube. What is happening? Are you there? It's us, Josh and Maureen from the Red Mountain Programs. Hi, everybody. Hello, it's us. Uh, we <laughs> we're the founders of the Red Mountain Programs. If you want to know more about the Red Mountain Programs, check out redmountainprograms.com. It will give you a link to Red Mountain Sedona and Red Mountain Colorado. We are meditation teachers and therapists and administrators and moms and dads and the whole deal. And um, I also have a huge crush on her. So anyway, we're glad that you are with us it's, today. I think it's gonna work out. Yeah, it's yeah. looking good. We just celebrated 17 years of uh, New Beal Bliss. So congratulations to you. Congratulations. N nuptial? Yeah, New I don't New think Beal New Beal is not. I think New Beal, no, no, okay. I think I got that wrong. N Definitely nuptial wrong. Bliss? Bliss. Just leave out there. <laughs> we just celebrated Marsupial. 17 years Marsupial since we got bliss. married. Marsupial scare me. Um, <laughs> a little okay. regression into Christopher Walken. So we are really trying hard to do these 10 minute videos because that's what you all have asked for. Um, one just of these days snack, I will as stop. As the kids say, although that's just a different a little, thing. So. Just a mindful moment. Not actually allowed to say that. You're not, it's not very fire of you. Um, the latest thing that they say is something's cracked. That's really great. That is cracked. That's interesting because in Ireland they say good crack. Good but crack, not, mate. It's, it's different. It's C R A I. Good crack, uh, mate. Yeah, but it's not like crack, like crack pipe. She hasn't noticed I'm going Australian when she said Ireland. But anyway, I can ignore yeah. all manner of things, honestly. <laughs> um, so listen, our son just went back to school, and and uh, we live in Arizona where they they go back to school pretty much. Uh, earlier than anybody else. August 4th. And so they're in school, probably by the time this posts, if you have children, they're gonna be going to school. It'll be, yeah. Yeah. It'll and be past Labor Day for sure, so. If you don't have children or if they're out of school already, it's cool. We still think you like this video. This because, will still help you. Yeah, it's really about transitions. Uh, we did a video recently on shock trauma and this is more about, um, Stress. Looming trauma. Or dun, just dun, stress, dun. you know. Looming stress, looming things that you mm -hmm. know are coming and then they come and they are as hard or harder or less hard than you thought they would be, but they're hard. And mm -hmm. um, so tell us a little bit about how your life has changed since school started and how you are coping with that in a mindful way. Well, you know, a lot of my life, um, maybe not. Yeah, a lot. Uh, depends upon how our son is doing. Mm. So we do have a teenage son. I won't say too much about him on a public forum, but we do He's have cool. a teenage son who's very, very cool. And he goes to a high school. He's in high school. And um, he's an upperclassman now. And he went back to school and the school grew by 150 students. So it's not a very big school. So it's Which about is 50% because it was 300 and now it's 450. And he was not expecting that. So he had a lot of, you know, larger and, and everyone's um, back in school from the COVID pandemic right. for now. Anyway, we fingers crossed that that sticks but a lot of people in school and he had become accustomed to much smaller classes last year because first of all, the school was 150 students smaller. And then there were people out all the time. A lot of people were choosing to do online education and, and um, attend school that way. And you know, then they had little pods that would have to quarantine after exposure and, and things like that. So huge adjustment for him, huge, huge, huge adjustment. And he is a big strapping, emotionally intelligent, um, scholastically intelligent young man. So it made, and I actually had a conversation with him about this today. It made me wonder how, you know, other people were dealing with that if they even happened to notice. Mm. And um, he was talking about all the ankle biters, you know, all the mm -hmm. ninth graders and stuff. <laughs> and he was like, I hope I wasn't this intolerable. And I said, well, I, I doubt you were, but I'm sure some of your friends were. And I said, remember how you used to be so intimidated by, you know, some of the upperclassmen who were so cool and just had their act together and you just wanted them to notice you and be kind to you. That's exactly how these little guys are looking at you. 
So be kind and know that you probably were that annoying to them, to the upperclassmen mm -hmm. at that point. But he really had a struggle for the first, I would say week and a half, the first, um, you know, seven days in school and week, the weekend after he started was a little tough. And, you know, transitions are hard for most of us if you see any people in an airport, you know, that's one of the great <laughs> transitional zones sure. on earth. Stressful. And yeah, very stressful. And people kind of lose their SHIT there sometimes. And can I say that on here? I've spelled it. So if you can't spell, you don't know what I said, but people sort of- YouTube can't spell, so they won't know yeah, that we said it. People have, um, sometimes the worst of the worst come out, comes out of them because it's transitional and we don't have any ground, we don't really know what to expect. So- I had a friend whose father had a massive heart attack in that airport. Oh my God. He, sur he survived, he survived. But it's just the like rushing through and- Right. One of the martial arts teachers in my martial arts lineage died of a heart attack rushing through an airport because it's wow. so- So much speed, so much velocity, so much stress, so much- Noise. Uh, like, yeah, so much noise. <laughs> and we're empathetic creatures like human yeah. beings, even if you don't think you're an empath, we're hardwired to pick up on each other's social cues. So if you see that everyone around you is stressed, you become stressed. I mean, yeah. I travel a lot for work and if I don't have my headphones on and I don't kind of keep a, I mean, you would not think I was like this Zen monk mindfulness teacher when I'm in the airport because I've got my hoodie on and my headphones and I'm like looking straight ahead. Because I can't take you in. Yeah, you need to protect like your energy and your life force it. that way. Yeah. So I was I was thinking too about this time that I remember when um, my dad, who's a very very brilliant man, was trying to teach my brother and I some math. And I'm younger than my brother, so I was maybe ten, and my brother was maybe twelve or thirteen, maybe younger. Maybe we were. I don't know. Um, but he was really really angry that we weren't getting it. And the person that I was talking to about this recently, I was just saying like, I was in my limbic system. You know, mm -hmm. I was in the limbic part of my brain, which yeah. is where you process emotion. You process emotion in your amygdala, which is also, guess what? Where your fight, flight, freeze responses are. So when you're emotional, that is not the time to learn anything. It's, you cannot access your prefrontal cortex when you are limbic or when you're traumatized or when you're, um, you know, in any way under duress or, or a negative kind of stress. There is a positive kind of stress called U stress, and it's not Y-O-U, it's E-U stress, which is a positive kind of stress, which is where you're learning and growing, and it's like exciting and fun, and that's what I experienced being in school. Like, like the stress that I have when I'm about to go to Europe with you, E-U stress. Yeah, right? but not... Because I'm excited about it. Yeah, I got, I see what you did there. What does the EU stand for in all seriousness? It's not It's European a Greek right? for, mm -hmm. you know, pot good. Oh. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I think. I didn't mean to derail you. Yeah. Go ahead. But, um, but kids have a hard time learning when they're stressed. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you can't, all of us, all of us have a hard time learning when we're stressed out. So, um, you know, please be patient with your, with yourselves, with your loved ones, with your children, as school is starting, as things are changing. I mean, maybe you have a child who's going from kindergarten to elementary school, maybe elementary to middle school, maybe middle to high school, maybe high school to college, or maybe you are living somewhere different or having to go back to the workplace or whatever. Just really, um, you know, tend to your own stress level and slow down. I mean, we always want to slow it down and just keep in mind that just because you're triggered doesn't mean that there's an emergency. So just because you're feeling triggered and you're triggered in your body, which means that your limbic system is activated, you're excreting more cortisol and adrenaline and norepinephrine into your bloodstream and epinephrine. Are negative. <clears throat> Those are the stress hormones. We, they're not negative necessarily. We need them. They're really, really important. But when we have too much of them, then we're not able to process or learn new information. Mm -hmm. So just know that, you know, if you do have kids and they're in school and you ask them, what did you learn today? And then you get a blank stare. There's a reason for that, you know? And if they're extra tired or 
um, really quiet or whatever. And please, please avail yourselves if you're able to uh, mental health counselors, um, therapists, you know, friends, anything like that, just so that you and your families are getting the support. Because I know everyone talks about how we've been through this unprecedented thing, but we have. And I don't think any of us have fully processed it at this point. So that's going to continue. It's going to continue for some time. Just keep an eye on, keep an eye on your little ones, even if they're not so little anymore. And, um, you know, just be really, really gentle with yourselves and, and with each other. Um, and we can present some techniques for clearing cortisol and toning your vagus nerve. I talked about gargling before. Humming is really good. Singing is really good. Shaking, dancing is really good. Um, naming things that you can see, smell, taste, touch, and feel. Those are really good techniques for just getting grounded. If you happen to meditate, meditate. If you happen to worship and have a religious practice or affiliation or faith, please you know, use that as a resource, especially now. And mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll just, we'll make it through this, right? We will, we have. And we will continue to. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, that's for, all I really had to say. It's yeah. Pretty, thank you for sharing all that. Yeah. We hope you found it helpful. Uh, Maureen at redmountainprograms.com, Josh at redmountainprograms.com. If you want to reach out and learn more about what we do, if you have any questions, if there is a topic you'd like us to discuss in the future, we love requests. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe to the video. And we're really glad that you could join us today. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.